Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today I have five heat press hacks for you and a bonus. So we are doing five heat press hacks from me and five heat press hacks from Corey George. And at the end of this video, if you're watching the live premiere, you'll automatically get sent to her video and be able to see her five hacks. If you're watching the replay at a later date, I will link to her video in the description below this one. So let's go through my five heat press hacks first, and then you can see hers as well. So my first hack is checking the temperature of your heat press. If you think your heat press is not coming to the right temperature, if you think your heat press might have hot and cold spots, if you think your heat press is too hot, too cold, just not working right, checking the temperature can often help you with your issue. I check my temperature with a digital infrared thermometer. However, don't just take your thermometer and point it at your heat press platen. The heat press platen is often reflective and it can give you readings that are inaccurate. So instead, what I recommend is closing the heat press at least 60 seconds at a certain temperature. As soon as that heat press lifts up, then point the heat gun at the pad that is on the bottom. That is often not reflective, or you could even put a shirt in there or something, just anything that is not reflective, and check the temperature of that area. It may drop a few degrees, but it should be fairly accurate and more accurate than pointing it directly at that heat press platen that is often shiny. So that's why I recommend checking your heat press temperature, and that can be a great way to troubleshoot issues that you might be having with any heat press that you might be using. If you use your heat press for HTV, you might be using a Teflon sheet. Teflon sheets are great when layering HTV to protect the other HTV that might be on the shirt. However, it can kind of be a pain, or sometimes you forget to add that Teflon sheet to the top, and you might have a disaster. So my hack for you is to put the Teflon sheet on the top of your heat press with a couple of magnets. Once you do that, it's on there and you won't forget. Now I would take the Teflon sheet off for sublimation, but for utilizing your heat press with HTV, this is an amazing hack and can keep you from forgetting to add that Teflon sheet. Places like Heat Transfer Warehouse even make Teflon sheets that sort of form fit around that top platen, depending on the size of your heat press. So if you don't like the magnet idea, you might shop there for a heat press platen protector that's made out of Teflon for the heat press that you have. My next hack is to laminate and keep handy any cheat sheets or like heat guides that you like to follow and keep them right next to your heat press. I have my sublimation process cheat sheet here and I'll link to that below. However, there are many on the market. One of the best I feel like is the sublimation cookbook by Jennifer Maker. It is so good. So laminate the sheets that you find useful or that you use most often because that cookbook is large but I would laminate the ones that you use most often, keep them right next to your heat press. That way they're always handy and you won't forget. Like if you struggle with the sublimation process or you know have some other cheat sheet that you use every single time, laminating it, keeping it by your heat press will make sure that you don't forget whatever information's on there the next time you go to press something. My next hack is a money saving hack. It's reusing protective paper and tape. So I use the Artist Brew protective paper, and if there is no ink on it after you're through with your sublimation, and that often happens on the piece that's inside or under my sublimation blank a lot of times, if there's no ink on it, I reuse it for the next time. Now I have the most luck out of reusing the Artist Brew protective paper. I find that the butcher paper yellows if I reuse it, and then it turns my blank yellow but the Artist Brew Protective Paper doesn't do that. So I feel like it's a money saving thing for me. I can reuse it several times as long as there's no ink on it. And the same goes for heat resistant tape, if you did not know that. So you can reuse heat resistant tape. As long as it's still sticky, didn't get any ink on it during the sublimation process, you can reuse it for your next blank. What I tend to do if I'm making multiples is I remove the heat tape and I kind of stick it to the edge of my table. Then when I add the next sublimation print, I peel that off and stick it down. Just make sure there's no ink on it and that it's still sticky enough to hold down your sublimation print and it will work perfectly even though maybe it's been used a few times. And my final heat press hack is something called threading. So you might 
take your shirt, put it on your heat press, and you want to preheat it, get all the wrinkles out, that type of thing. But with two layers of fabric, it can often be tough. That under layer of fabric might have a few wrinkles, it might mess up, then you have to preheat again, and you definitely don't want that to happen when you're pressing your sublimation print or your HTV to the top. Threading can fix that because then you only have one layer of material to worry about. So what you do is you separate the layers of the shirt and kind of put the shirt around the heat press. Now this works best if you put the shirt upside down on your heat press, so you definitely want to watch how you turn your sublimation print or your HTV when you put it in the press. However, this can really make your process faster. You don't have to worry about the double layers of the fabric. And we were talking about protect paper earlier. If you're doing sublimation, you put protected paper down on the heat press, thread each shirt over it and remove it. And that way you reuse that protected paper it's on your heat press at all times. You don't have to put the protective paper inside of the shirt. So you just thread, that's what it's called, threading. You just thread the shirts onto the heat press one after another. Really speeds up the time. So you might give it a try the next time you have a bulk order of shirts or need to make several. I think you might like that hack. So that was my five heat press hacks. And we have five more from Corey, but before we get to that, Corey and I are, have also partnered up to help you purchase the heat press that's right for you. It is called Heat Press Roadmap. You can locate it at heatpressroadmap.com. I will put that URL right here and also in the description below this video. Heat Press Roadmap was designed to help you purchase the correct press or upgrade to the correct press. Corey and I often get questions about which heat press should I purchase? Is an easy press the right press for me? Do I need the Cricut hat press or do I need a larger hat press? Is a full size heat press what I need? What size do I need? What features? There are so many options when it comes to purchasing a heat press. So we thought that we would break it all down in an easy to follow e-course. With 27 workshops covering 17 heat presses, you're gonna find something that you're gonna enjoy within Heat Press Roadmap. And we have tons of bonuses, including SVG and sublimation files. So the SVG and sublimation files alone with the commercial license are worth what we're charging right now at the introductory rate for Heat Press Roadmap. So it is gonna go up before long. You only have a few weeks to purchase it at the introductory price. So be sure to head to heatpressroadmap.com now, check out the course and enroll if you would like. You'll learn how to make over 15 projects with those SVG and sublimation files. You'll learn how to use each of those heat presses so that you can decide which heat presses you need in your craft space and which you quite frankly don't. And you all have been asking me and asking me to review other auto presses and Heat Press Roadmap does that. So we have the Cricut Auto Press, the Vivor, I don't know how you say it, to pronounce that, but Vivor Auto Press, and the HTV Rot Auto Press. All three of those are within Heat Press Roadmap. So we show you those heat presses, use them, review them, and let you know the pros and cons of each of them. So that's just three examples out of the 17, and I know you are gonna find something that you're gonna love within Heat Press Roadmap. Now I promised you five more hacks from Corey, right? So if you're watching the live premiere with me, as soon as I'm done talking, the live premiere for Corey will start. If you're watching during the replay, I will link to her video in the description below this one. So head to the description below. You'll find any links I talked about, including the link to Corey's video, and you can see her five heat press hacks. Now, if you liked my hacks, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the hacks I talked about, drop down in the comment section and ask away. If you haven't already, head to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. I have videos just like this one every single week and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those. Now, if you're joining us for the live premiere, stay tuned for Corey's video and I'll see you next week with another great video right here. Thanks y'all, bye-bye.